even if I can do something, you know, by myself, I always try to include him in it and, you know, and, and really try to do things together, you know, life with each other is so much better than life around each other. Right. Ooh, um, and so. <laughs> Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Iron Tribe, if there was one thing you could improve about your marriage right now, what would it be? Would you deepen your connection with your partner so you can both work on getting the results that you desire and deserve? Or what about bringing more awareness to your marriage about how thoughtful you are, being mindful and intentional in your relationship? Or do you simply just want to solve complex problems that always pop up in our lives? Um, to have difficult conversations and still maintain some clarity, understanding, and have a feeling of compassion and collaboration. Mm -hmm. So why don't we embark on a journey that will make our marriages stronger, happier, and more intimate than it's ever been? And you can do that with our new 18-part video training series called Raising the Bar. This video training series will help you apply the relationship success formula that we've applied and helped other couples around the world in at least 33 different countries. And just so you know, raising the bar, bar is an acronym and it stands for beliefs, actions, results. Because ultimately when we look at our relationships, specifically our marriages, mm -hmm. we want to create a belief system that's going to dictate our actions on a daily basis. And it's those actions that are going to yield the results that we want. Right. Don't delay, go to the show notes, click on raising the bar so you can actually get the results that you want by implementing those beliefs and actions today. All right, let's get ready for the podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Married Into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Levy. I'm Levy. I'm Snooks. And today we have a special treat for all of you. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> So each and every one of us, we, we've talked about building an iron tribe. We've talked about surrounding yourselves with other couples, like-minded couples that are going to be, uh, let's call them assets for mm. your marriage as opposed to liabilities. And it's, it's important because like we've always talked about, and you guys are probably getting sick and tired of us talking about this, but it goes back to what my mom said, what my grandmother said, show me your friends and I'll show you who you'll become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is a special couple that we have invited on today. Uh, I mean, you, you can see like, ooh, he married well, <laughs> if you're watching YouTube. So today we actually have Quest and Faith Green in the house. Hey, and I don't, I don't have all the special sound effects to get the applause and all that. That's why I snapped my fingers. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I'm excited. I'm excited. So how are you two doing? I mean, I can't complain, man. Babe. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, good. As, long, as long as she said we're good, then we're good. Amen. He said, I can't complain, babe. Oh, okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. Right. We're good. I like that. Okay. Love you. Oh, Take that's note. the real deal. That's the real Take deal. Note. Yeah. Note. Look, for those of you that aren't familiar with, with Quest and Faith, um, I want to give you two an opportunity to kind of talk about who you are, what you do. I, I Snooks wants to dive all the time right well, into I'm, I'm, the love I'm, story. I haven't said anything. So, go ahead. <laughs> So, so we're Quest and Faith Green. Um, I am a uh, marriage coach. I'm also the CEO of the, uh, the Greenhouse that you see back there. Um, it is a marriage community. Um, we, uh, the three pillars of the company are love, lifestyle, and legacy. We try to get couples to realize that those three pillars um, should help them in times of difficulty and challenge focus on what's most important. We do it through community, through conferences, and through coaching. Um, we try to get couples to realize that their differences should bring them together and not draw them apart. Um, and that's not an easy <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do. Um, but uh, that's pretty much who we are. Um, 
Um, yeah, I, we help them. And my wife keeps me uh, sane because you take on a lot when you, as you guys know, you take on a lot when you're coaching. All right. And if you're not uh, uh, careful, you can lightweight bring some of that own stuff into your mix and you don't want that. So she's the one who keeps me sane. And she is the one who uh, is the apple of my eye, the one that I make sure that uh, if she's good, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's the long and short of who I am. And, nice. and who, yeah. So, yeah, and I want everybody to know, <laughs> how did you like people are like, OK, how do you guys know each other? And I, I just got to put it out there. But when I first became an extreme execution coach um, and, and E.T. was coaching me. And he was like, okay, what's your niche? Where you, what's your focus? What's your passion? What are you going to do? And when I said, it's all about marriage. And he was like, oh, you got to meet Quest. <laughs> that was the first thing he said. And about a year later, we our paths crossed and we were able to really link up. And, and Quest is extremely, extremely humble. And what he didn't tell everyone is that he's also the director for Thank God I'm Married for um, Eric Thomas and Associates. Yeah. And Quest invited us on to kind of assist every now and then because his plate is so full. And that's how we initially met. And it was just, we vibed ever since then. And I, I, I've been dying to get the two of you on. And every now and then I hear Faith coming in. I, I've seen some clips. She brings the heat at your conferences. And here's the funny thing. She's always fighting and doesn't want to be out in the front. But when she gets there, she takes my mic out of my hand and goes <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? Goes left field quick. I tell, I tell him if the spirit moves me. Oh, if right. the spirit moves. Well, the spirit been moving a lot at the conference. That's so let's right. See. That's right. Yeah. One thing that you said earlier, uh, Quest, about um, just protecting yourself. You know, we think about when we, you talk about um, self-care, mm -hmm. you know, relationships need self-care too. I thought that was a, a very good point that you made mm -hmm. about um, being careful of what we bring into our marriages and our relationships, especially being coaches. And we're also very vulnerable, you know, and when you have couples talking to you guys and some of that might jump off um, faith might not like how she, the other lady said something or the man said something and anything could come up and you might not like how someone said something. And before you know it, y'all might be arguing about something another couple was talking about. So I just thought that was very good, um, very good point that you made, you know, being very careful. You have to guard yourselves yeah. um, of, from any outside forces because they will come. Yeah, I think for me personally, one of the ways that I guard myself as of late, um, you know, we always talk about the priorities. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate uh, and I'm driven behind priorities, specifically in family, like for me, it's God, it's faith, it's the kids, it's work, it's uh, extended family, and then everything else after that. And I would always say it, and it got to a point for me, Snooks, where it was just like, all right, that's cute that you say that. Are you behaving in real, you know, ways that are evident Mm -hmm. I always like to say we need to be evidence producers, mm -hmm. right, um, of, of my priority list. And so over the last, and I've always been one to try my best to keep God first, but I've really started, and I have this thing where I'm up, down, up, down in terms of my walk. And as of late, because I know that this is, I don't know for you guys, but for us, it's, it, it's a strange season, <laughs> There's a lot going on where I'm looking at my marriage differently. I, I turn 50 next year. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but uh, you know, this is the last year of the 49, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I'm really paying attention to, are you the man who you claim to be? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I don't want my talents or my gifts to take me to a place that my character can't keep me. And he says it over and over again that it's an inside job. So what I've done is I've got myself a Bible reading plan. Mm. And every morning, Faith knows now that I get up at about 6.15, 6.30, and the weather's warm, so I go out on the back patio. And I'm thankful Faith said, I want a pergola. So we went and put a pergola up in the back. And I go out there and I sit every morning. It was for her, but I'm enjoying it during worship time. 
Um, I spend my time reading whatever's on the agenda that morning. And then after that, praying for myself, for my family, for people. And then I just kind of sit back for a while. I do some reading in terms of, you know, because as coaches, we're always reading marriage books um, just to keep ourselves abreast. But one of the ways that I protect myself is by doing that in the morning, Mm -hmm. sitting after I read, God, what are you trying to say to me concerning what I read this morning? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for my marriage? What does it mean for me as a father, as a husband? So as you speak to this thing called protecting yourself, there's actual ways Mm -hmm. that we can do that. And I don't know about no other better way than to hooking up with the creator in the morning and the first of the day, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. You know, that's interesting. You know, it's, it's, I love hearing you say that Mm -hmm. because I don't know if you remember the very first piece of advice that you gave me. Yeah. Our very first conversation. And I always ask, you know, what, what is the one thing that if I was to do this one thing that would make everything else that much easier when it comes to helping other couples. Mm-hmm. And you said, be a voracious reader. Yep. Read, read, read. read. And, yep. uh, and so I love hearing that. And it's funny, cause you were talking about, you know, being a, uh, the congruency, you mm-hmm. know, are, are you the man that God intends you to be? Mm-hmm. And um, I just had a conversation with someone the other day about how you can be right and move wrong, but rarely can you move right and be wrong. Man. And 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 I, I love how you're saying that, but I don't want to go too far into the the, the super depths of yeah, coaching and marriage because I really want to hear about the love story. Once upon a time. Yeah. That's my part. Anyway, <laughs> I get to ask those questions. That's my this is the fun part for me. So I want to know. I mean, we know, but I want everyone else to know how y'all met. And um, I think it's super cute, but I want to know. I want you to tell the story of how you met. So whoever starts first. My version or his version? Well, I was going to say whoever starts first. My version is the truth. So, I mean. (laughs) I want to hear faith. (laughs) Well, my my truth is um, we met while. Your truth or the truth? Yeah, the truth. Okay. Um, Well, I was. 15, 16 years old, um, high school. Uh, his sister and I were very good friends in high school. Um, and uh, he had already left. He was, you know, he had graduated already, but I was always over her house. She was always over my house. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I got to know his family and, and of course um, himself and, <laughs> and knew that, you know, he will, he will claim that, you know, I was giving him the eye. Of I'm course. like, I was 16. Faith, I I'm saw like, you. I don't know if I was really giving you the eyes, but Faith, I saw you. <laughs> some fascinating um, and, you know, he's, he's what, four years older than I am. So I think he was giving me the eye, but, <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, but our parents would have killed us, killed us at the time. <laughs> so Um, Yeah, fast forward, you know, we graduated high school, I went off to college, my sister went off a separate direction. And so we kind of lost touch um, afterwards. And I don't know how many years um, passed, you know, I was in- We bumped into each other a couple of times when I I moved back to New York. Right, right. But um, kind of lost touch. And then um, my job relocated me from New York to here, Charlotte, and it was 2008 mm-hmm. or 2009. Well, we tried to connect before that because you were visiting your aunt in Atlanta and I was living in Atlanta at the time. Yeah, but I was already here. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I had just, I had literally just moved to Charlotte in mm-hmm. two th- in February of 2009 because I started with the, my company that I'm still with to this day. Um, in 2008 and they relocated me in February of 2009. I reconnected with him in August of that year, of that year and via Facebook, um, I was visiting. Shouts out to Meta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, came across, you know, we came across each other and he knew I had re- 
and she she told you right mm -hmm. oh guess who I reconnected with and whatever right? and I was going to be in Atlanta he was in Atlanta I was in Charlotte and he I was going to be in Atlanta visiting my aunt at the time who lived in Atlanta and so he you know hit me up and was like oh I hear you coming to visit my sister we need to you know meet up whatever, whatever, because his sister was also living in Atlanta at the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we kind of reconnected. And, um, and then from there, we started dating after that. Um, his sister wasn't too happy about that in the beginning. <laughs> she was like, that's my friend <laughs> and all of that. But, um, you know, she I was like, she, shut up. I made your best friend, your sister. It. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Right. I love it. And so, yeah, the rest is history. I mean, we dated for about a, a year and change. Mm -hmm. And after that, we got engaged um, and planned our wedding another year. She came down to visit me for my birthday. And In then August, yeah. from that weekend forward, I think for every weekend right. for a whole year, I was in, either in Charlotte or she was in Atlanta. We would alternate. We would mm -hmm. alternate weekends. Mm -hmm. So I would go to him one weekend. The next weekend, he would come to me. She couldn't get enough. <laughs> oh, no. Sounds like it was going both ways. <laughs> right. It was like, true, true. <laughs> funny how I picked up on him when Faith you know, was given dates. And then she said, and then in August of that year, how do they do that? I don't know. That's Listen, the women, women have, it's already bad that she's yeah. a 99 C it's already bad. <laughs> if you ask me, it's 199, but that's a whole nother conversation for another time. But it is crazy the way that they can like attach a date. I, I, I think, it, I, I think what it is, is that it, and, and y'all probably study it as well. Women have this e emotional cord that runs through them that allows them to attach a particular event Mm -hmm. to a date and it's burned onto their brain and then once that happened oh i remember that that happened to january 23rd at three o'clock on i'm like oh yeah <laughs> but don't ask me to remember uh people's names or he'll say don't you know that person we met them in? and i'm like huh? <laughs> <laughs> like i don't Pretty remember that. that's yeah. mm -hmm. so funny that's she's so the same funny. way oh and you were wearing xyz and remember you came with so-and-so and my you know that person was there and i'm like I, I kind of remember the month. <laughs> I was in the vicinity. We pay attention to detail. That's mm -hmm. what I'm just saying. So, so let's ask, let me ask you, Quest. So was mm -hmm. that pretty accurate? No, that's very uh it's it's accurate to an extent. <laughs> um it's her truth. I'm, I'm, I'm happy wife. I, you can say yeah, that. Right, why dispute it, right? <laughs> this is, let me tell you what actually happened. I I was in my first year of college. Um, but I stayed home for my first year. I was at Middlesex County and uh, she, she uh, once again, her and my sister, it was her, Maria, Shannon, and, my, and Faith, and all four of them, they always would be at my house. And it, I lived in a town home, which was right behind my high school. So I was up on the third floor. That's where my hangout spot was. And so I had to pass my sister's bedroom to get to the stairs to go up to the loft. And so every time I would pass, I would catch her peeking out the, the thing and I look back at, oh, okay, yep, I see you. I uh, she was, she was, she was, she was from. cute. <laughs> she was definitely cute. I won't lie that. She had this nice little bob haircut. She was a cute little thing in high school, right? And I was like, oh, if you're a little older or whatever, she was shooting the eye. I know she was. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, so, That's so funny. you two are funny, but so the fact that you guys, went and had your lives mm -hmm. to a certain extent, right? And then yeah. refound each other. What was it about the, the reconnection that really attracted you two to each other? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Of course, for us, we're, we're visual, right? So it's always the physical thing first, but I had already lived like a life. Like I was married, divorced, seven years, single. And had a child. Uh, yep, had a, had a daughter. Um, and, um, when I re I remember how she, how she was when she was, Faith was always cool, very cool individual. I always loved her disposition as a friend, you know, as my sister's friend, of course. 
Um, and we would talk, you know, she'd come over to the house from time to time and we would short conversations, but they were always cool, you know. Um, we were always the big brothers that like, for real, when we were out at the club, they would end up coming in when they got of age and like, oh, I tell my boys, all right, my sister and friends here tonight, look out for everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we kind of looked out for everybody watching when we would, we, we, we were living in South Brunswick, New Jersey at the time. We're originally from New York, but our parents, of course, they wanted to get out of the city. So mm-hmm. they thought bringing us to the suburbs and we ended up right back in New York anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's house parties and everybody knows everybody in those towns, right? And so th- th- we were kind of like, whenever we went out, they wanted to go out with us as well. But I remember her disposition from back then and who she was X amount of years later, she was the same person. And I love that about her. I mean, and of course she was older. She was a little bit more mature. mature. <laughs> yeah, I was we get it. <laughs> Let's keep it PG. No. <laughs> you know, she had... She had grown in, in, in certain ways, <laughs> hallelujah. And so I was like, man, Faith is looking good, right? And then I contacted her on you know, a little Facebook messenger and we went back and forth. And just in conversing with her, I'm just like, yo, this is the same disposition and everything. And I found out more when she started visiting for the weekends. And when we went through that year, I'm just like, man, I love this chick. As a matter of fact, when it got to the end of the year, I'm like, all right, enough is enough. It don't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. Let's, Come on. you know what I'm saying? What are we going to do? Barbecue or mildew? And so, <laughs> and so um, I spoke to her. We had numerous conversations about marriage, what we wanted to do, where we were going to go. And I remember telling E when we first started dating, I was like, yo, E, I'm, I'm starting to date again. And he was like, where? He's like, first thing he said, do she love the Lord? I'm like, yeah, she love the Lord. Right. And so we started talking some more, talking some more. And then when it was time to have the, I was like, okay, I need you and Didi got to do this premarital because we we about to go in. And they did. A year later, we're down in DR and he's doing the, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, ceremony. And here we are 11 years later. Mm-hmm. And by the way, congratulations. Uh-huh. Um, I, I saw, uh, you know, this little tiny little ceremony that took place over in Mexico. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a little tiny something. A little something. <laughs> a little something, something. And it breaks my heart because we were supposed to be there. Man. Yeah. Man. Man. Like, the, and it was a couple of people that were missing that we really was like, and y'all are definitely uh, one of those people that we, we, we hope y'all would be there. Don't worry, though. <laughs> the yeah. and the Greens got a lot of stuff they will be doing in the near future together i will say i will say that when he and i first reconnected i had well i moved i moved from new york like i said my company relocated me but it was really a godsend Mm -hmm. you know god orchestrated the entire relo Mm -hmm. um because otherwise i wouldn't have reconnected with him i was in new york and he was in atlanta it definitely would like that long distance really would not have worked Mm -hmm. um but also i had just gotten out of a seven-year relationship that was total like chaos um and just extremely bad you're telling me i saved you (laughs) Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> he always wants to take that role. Okay. Um, but but I say all of that to say that the day it was either that day or the, that week um, when I got when I moved to Charlotte, I you know I started just dating you know trying to get to know people here that first the first few months and stuff like that. And I met someone who had this exact same red flags that I had just gotten out of a relationship from. Mm. Um, and I right away, I was just like, nope, not going to do that again. I just got out of the seven year relationship that was just torture and um, just very toxic. And I got away from that. I'm here in Charlotte, new beginning, new, you know, um, and i I remember it like it was yesterday. I just broke down and started like, I got on my knees and I started praying and I said, God, I'm like, I'm done. Like, if you have someone for me, I'm going to have, you're going to have to 
send him to me right. because I'm so saying I'm so done with trying to find someone. I, I'm I'm just over it. Um, and I don't want to keep repeating the same cycle and the same, you know, I just keep meeting the same type of person. Right. And that is same exact week, he sends me a message. God said, I'm going to hook you up. Um, and that's how we reconnected. And so here we are, like you said, 11 years later. <laughs> Do you remember what that feeling was like oh, when you got that text or that message from him? You know, after. No, but what did I say to you? <laughs> Say, we me. had a conversation and she was like men are ish <laughs> oh, I, said, I said flat out I was like I'm so over and the she whole was thing. like men ain't about ish <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I said no not all men by this time I got it already been working over on me I dated a little bit as well and you know nothing serious that I saw Oh, I, no, that's not the, the one last relationship, but there was just one thing or a couple of things that I was like, you know what you married and divorced, you don't, you don't have a high tolerance for foolishness, especially when you serious about your life and where you going after, right, in terms of relationship. And I dated someone and I'm not going, I have nothing bad to say, but there were just one or two things that I was just like, I can't do relationship with that thing present. Right. And I knew that it wasn't going anywhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so that, that, you know, and then when Faith came along and she said, well, you know, men ain't about ish. She was like, men ain't. Ish. I was like, no, sweetheart, not all of them. She was like, yeah. I was like, yep. I said, give me an opportunity to prove it to you. And then the story was written. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's yep. funny though. And, I, and I, folks, I don't want you guys to miss this. For, the, for those of you that are in that same place, mm -hmm. men ain't ish, you know, well, women ain't ish. I'm just... I'm just trying to figure this thing out. First of all, congratulations for listening and trying to get some notes on when you turn the corner. But I, I think that there's a bar in that because when you get to the point where you stop looking, you're not at the club hunting, you get right. off the killing ground, so to speak, wow. and you just be, right? And, and you're just like, I'm gonna live my life. And, right. and, and you live the life that, that Faith prayed that if something's going to happen, you're going to bring them to me. You're going to package them up, put a bow on them, and make sure I know. Right. It's a total surrender. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's big. It is. It, surrender is a great word. Um, simply because a lot of times, you know, look, there's no, there's no question about it. We're all people of faith. And when we talk about our Christianity, you know, um, I was pointing out to somebody the other day that when you look throughout the Bible, to a person, I don't care who it is. If you if you pick a Bible hero, uh -huh. um, every single one of those individuals, God didn't seek them out. God didn't say, "Oh, you know what? This person is doing phenomenally well. You know, I'm going to go ahead and bless them even further." It was somebody was broken. Somebody had to submit, surrender to God in order for that grace to be extended and for them to actually end up becoming that hero that for generations, for eons, that we're all looking at as examples. Yeah. It's that word surrender. And I think that's huge that we need to surrender in our relationships, uh, surrender to God in order to have the relationships. Yep. But um, when, when you, when you, when you really take stock though, um, e, and you look at the foundational chapters of the Bible, as it relates to surrender, when you look at Ephesians five, right. Where it tells husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church. And it tells wives to honor or respect your husbands. That's really what it is at the end of the day, love and respect. But at the end of the chapter, it just ties a nice little bow on it. However, Paul says, husbands, love your wives. Wives, reverence your husbands. If that is not in alignment with surrender, I don't know what is. Come on. Because it's calling husbands to do what they don't do naturally. We, we, we move by respect. Right. Like if you come from the area, of, you know, I still got a little bit of residue of the hood left in, you know what I'm saying? Even though God has been a blessing over the, over the couple of years and there's, there's a code of respect. You talk crazy to another man on the block, he liable to go in your mouth, right? Or, or worse, right? right? You know that, that like if Pookie doing X, Y, and Z, you keep your mouth shut, you, 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 even if you don't agree, there's still a level of respect you got to move with. Mm -hmm. right? Women love naturally. 
right? It's the respect part. <laughs> they speak freely, you feel me? And I find it quite I find it quite interesting that God would call us to do the thing that we don't do naturally. He calls women to respect and he calls us to love and he calls us to initiate the process. So before I do this, I have to surrender to you as my creator so that I can properly love her the way that you love me. And in doing so, it sets this whole dynamic in motion because the way that she's wired, if you love her the way that she needs to be loved, she's going to look for a way to reciprocate. But at the beginning or the foundation of it all is surrender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love that. And I, I, think, I think that that's like, for real, you, you said it. It's foundational to everything that we do, that word right there. If we would learn to do that, we we can change all the marriages come on teach <laughs> teach you know here's here's the funny thing i was telling snooks this beforehand uh, several months ago we um actually it was more it's probably about a year ago um we're, you know, we're lining up some a list of people that we want to invite on the show mm -hmm. and um aside from yourselves there were like some coaches and snooks i'm calling you out she was like why are you going to have a bunch of other marriage coaches <laughs> on our show mm -hmm. and you know, the, the funny thing about it, though, and this is the analogy that I use, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, Quest, is that if you look at a guitar, guitar is a beautiful instrument. Beautiful. And, but each string on that guitar is a particular note. Mm -hmm. You play those notes individually, they're beautiful. But if you play those notes together, come on, they operate for, for the glorification, if you will, of the instrument, right? You make beautiful music using all the notes. Mm -hmm. But some people like songs that are played in the key of E. Some people like in the key of C. Some people like in the key of G. But if you play those notes and you allow them to actually be strummed together, and it's glorifying that, that I think each and every one of us coaches, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that are, I feel like, that are, that are based on God's word and that are really, truly doing it for God's glory, mm -hmm. we're nothing more than individual strings on the same instrument. And when you, when you strum us together, when you play us together, when you... Ooh. We, it's for the glorification of God and the covenant that he's given us. And, and that's why I was like, I told, that's why I want to have it because we might say something and it might not resonate with somebody, but what if, what if Quest and Faith are talking in a different key that, but it's all for the glory of God. So we need synergy. to have more synergy. That synergy. And like so. <laughs> oh, Faith said it's like Voltron. What do you know about that Voltron? Faith? Oh. <laughs> The lions were dope individually, but they used to get their tail handed to them a couple of times when they come. Oh, wow. that. But when they come together as Voltron, and they form that blazing sword, my my my. Good. Faith over there teaching. Come on. <laughs> so here, a couple more questions, and then I want to get into the greenhouse. Okay, one of the questions I want to ask you is, what is something after eleven years of marriage? What is something that you each? And this is for both of you. You each believed early in your marriage, coming into the marriage, that over time and maturity that you've discovered that, mm, no, that, that's not quite what I, what I thought it was going to be, right? What has not stood the test of time mm -hmm. that you thought early on, but in that discovery has made your, your marriage that much more rich? Does that make sense? I think for me, it's my misconceptions about leadership. And I see it evident even in my children, especially Nico. Um, I realize that leadership is so much more about helping whoever you're leading get to their destination, much more than it is about actually leading in and of it. Uh, servant leadership, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, there are some things that I want to see, but they will never happen unless I do them consistently so that they can see. I realize that, and I don't mean in a derogatory term, please hear what I'm telling you. Women want to be led in their families by their husbands. And they want to be led in such a way where they can depend on their husbands to be the strong, and when I'm talking about physical strength, I am, but I'm not. I'm talking about spiritually strong, mentally strong, 
and I'm talking about all of these qualities that most people may think are macho, but within the context of servant leadership. I don't faith will tell you, I don't beat her over the head about her relationship with God. I get up every morning and I'm supposed to do. And if I do it right, it will have an effect on my family. In the beginning, I used to think like, you get up and you tell you to do this, you tell this and you run the house, right? And when they don't do it, then you try to control or you try to manipulate in order to get the end result that you're looking for. It's an inside job. And when I say inside, I'm not talking about inside the relationship. It is, but I'm talking about inside me as an individual. Mm -hmm. In the presence of God and have him mold and shape and cut. And whenever he's done molding and shaping and cutting, that he does perfectly. His plan is perfect. He will have me moving in this house and then he'll have his spirit move on the rest of the individuals in the home. And guess what? Everybody in the home, simply because of servant leadership. And I'm learning more and more that I- Strong will. <laughs> <laughs> when he wants to do, case in point, we were in the car the other day and whenever we were walking anywhere, Nico likes to walk out in the front, all right? And nine years old. And when he's walking now, he walks, but he doesn't know exactly where he's going. We'll make a turn because he's not sure. He just likes the fact that he's walking in the front. And I have to say, Nico, we're going in this direction. Well, why are we not going in that direction? Because that's not where we're going. He'll actually ask these questions. So I say to him, leadership is so much more than just being out in the front. It's helping people get to their destination. The other night we went to dinner. And so we were coming back to the parking lot. He's walking out in front again. And he said, I helped everybody get to the car. See, I told you I could be a leader. <laughs> but I realized that he's taking in the information, but he is uh, processing it like he would as a nine-year-old, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm trying to get him to understand. I don't want to take away his strong will. He said to me, the, the, uh, the, uh, us in the car the other night, I'm tired of people telling me what I can and can't do. If daddy's a leader, I can be a leader too. And I'm going to prove you wrong that I can be a leader. And I was like, Nico, you have to understand that once I, I didn't just become yeah. a leader, if right. you will, faith reminded him that daddy was your age at one time and he had to follow a whole lot of following before he actually got into a place to be a leader. So it's funny, you, 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 I'm telling y'all, you need to, if you're going to have children, be careful about how you live your life. But they come boy and they are the spitting image when I tell you there are times where I could be stubborn, Nico can, Nico can be stubborn and they love to tell me, oh, he's just like you. Thank you. That really helps. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. So let him do it now because he's just like me. So what I'm realizing. No, I don't say, but I don't say it to, you know, to dig or anything. I yes. say it more so so that he can have more of a, a, an empathy to or or be more compassionate as to why he's doing a particular thing like be more understanding and remind yourself that one day you were that same age and you did that same exact thing so like bring it back and you know try to we have to like unlearn and relearn right like our parents taught us certain things but they could only take us but so far right. and we had to take ourselves the rest of the way mm -hmm. and so he's learning through us and we could only take him but so far but, but that's, that's but, yeah but that's a perfect example babe because as 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 i'm teaching him he's also teaching me about right me and my response to exactly i'm a firm believer in the fact that every difficult every challenging every situation of opposition is an opportunity for growth right and even when nico is doing his thing and bucking the system and i want to hang him like strange fruit <laughs> that's a, it's an opportunity for me to grow so if you ask me what it is that i thought was one way in the beginning of our marriage I'm now understanding that there are certain times where faith, you're going to have to take pole position on this one and whatever you tell me to do, I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's the servant leadership that I realize makes this family move exponentially quick in, right. in a forward direction. You know? I like that. I like that. What about you, Faith? And I'm sorry, can you just repeat the question for me? Because I want to make sure that I fully understood it. <laughs> 
Right. Like, so what is something that you believed early in your marriage that has not stood the test of time? And in discovering that has actually made it your relationship that much more rich. Um, I, th- I, I want to say right off the bat, the first thing that comes to mind is my independence. And when I say independence, I mean feeling like I can do it all by myself mm-hmm. or, you know, I, in the beginning of our marriage, I always felt like, well, if he can't do it, that's fine. I, I can do it anyway. You know, like I'm perfectly capable and I've, you know, I've done it this far by myself and, you know, he didn't meet me, you know, out of high school with not a penny. Like I had my own place, my own car, like I was independent, paying my own bills. I didn't need anybody, you know? And so I came into the relationship, you know, kind of like, well, if this doesn't work, I mean, I was fine. (laughs) Like I was independent. I was, you know, like I said, paying my bills. I didn't need, you know, a man to do those things for me. I'm getting married because I want to get married, not because I needed to, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that perspective has changed to into more of a partnership, right? So it's, it's more of, we need each other um, more so from, from a partnership standpoint and wanting to help each other grow, wanting to not, it, even if I can do something, you know, by myself, I always try to include him in it and, you know, and, and really try to do things together, you know, life with each other is so much better than life around each other right Ooh, um, and so <laughs> and so you know that's i think that's where a lot yeah i mean and i think a lot of couples we when he does coaching and and i sit in on on some of the sessions uh, we hear these issues from couples that they've you know she has her life he has his life his job, her job, they kind of run parallel, but never together. And so it's weird to me, and it's not weird because I can see how it happens, right? Because I was there once, but a a marriage is not about that. A marriage is a union. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you have to you have to be intertwined with each other. You have to do things together. Mm-hmm. Um, his business, I'm I'm heavily involved in his business, even though I'm not the one personally doing the coaching, but I'm heavily you involved. You what to do though. Yes, I do. Um, but on an administrative level. <laughs> and and so, and even, you know, with, with my stuff, he helps me, you know, with my things. And then of course the children, we, we discipline them together. We don't like play that role like oh you discipline them and I'll you know I won't and I'll do this or you know I'll I'll take the trash out and you do like we don't do that here like everything we do things together and you know it's it that's where we stay united um and we keep that connection and you know I I think that's where my perspective has changed who are you yeah shut up That's with me. Take it funny. <laughs> I mean, faith coming with the heat. I'm loving this. Yeah. That was good. That's gonna be a quote. Uh life with each other is better than life around each other. I'm just saying. I wonder where she got that. From. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that that's the greenhouse motto. <laughs> so let's 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 talk about greenhouse. Yeah. So tell us what, what exactly is greenhouse? How did greenhouse come to be and what is it that you do? Um, well, first and foremost, we, of course, you got to name it something when you get into this work, right? What's the company, the company going to be, right? What's the name of the company, you know? And so we were like, um, our last name is green. What can we do around the name green? Mm Because I always wanted it to be something in terms, I was always thinking about legacy, always thinking about legacy. And I want the name to live on, Right. And so green, first thing, greenhouse. I remember we had one name, Greenhouse Rules. 
you know what I'm saying? And it was a play on words, of course. And then I was like, well, maybe if we do the community, I don't want it to be greenhouse rules I have in my mind and maybe God will allow it to come to fruition later on. It, the greenhouse rules is a, an idea that I had for us to have kind of like a reality kind of show kind of thing. But mm. aside from all the foolishness that you see on TV, like a real marriage operating a real kind of way, challenges and difficulties, and not only the challenges and difficulties, you would see how we would navigate through those challenges and difficulties for a win on the back end, right? Maybe God will allow me to do it later on. I'm not quite sure, but that was something that was always on my mind. Then I took off the rules and was like, a greenhouse, what is a greenhouse? Mm -hmm. A greenhouse is a place that things Things grow, grow. Mm -hmm. right? My mindset for marriages was always from the beginning, marriages are, you know, are living things. And if you don't feed living things, they will die. That's right. Right? And so um, it went from coaching to community. Um, the three things really and truly that I always do is my three C's, my coaching, my community, and conferences. There were a lot more of coaching and conferences, and people kept coming more and more to the point where, like, I was like, it's, this is not one-on-one. Would you be, uh, you, you know, turned aside if we had this? In the, and I just thought about it more. Why am I asking people? When you have a community and people who join your community, like, for real, There are things that are being shared in a corporate environment that don't necessarily happen on a one-on-one. And thus, just from the thought process and us thinking it over, and that's how the greenhouse marriage community came together, right? And so um, we meet twice a month where the uh, the couples get together. We talk about everything marriage from A to Z, everything, nuts, bolts, super nuts, everything. The right? good, the bad, the sexy. The good, the bad, the sexy, the ugly, you know what I'm saying? Everything. We talk about it. Um, and um, it's it's starting to blossom over even more. Uh, come next year, 2023, we're taking our first uh, uh, marriage retreat, all right? Our, our greenhouse marriage getaway. And we're going to the beautiful island of Antigua next year. And so if anybody wants to come along, they can come along, get in contact with us. We'll give you the information. And um, um, we're going to do our first uh, getaway there. Um, But we're planning to do some extra things. I'd like to, um, in the near future, purchase a building, all right, and call it the greenhouse Mm -hmm. and have an actual place where we can hold conferences Mm -hmm. and have events Mm -hmm. and all marriage-related date nights, Um, all kinds of stuff that's what I want that's what my vision is for the greenhouse later on um, just to Mm -hmm. begin but that's it's basically focused around community all for the efforts of uh, I I say it all the time from shaky to good from good to great ultimately what we want is phenomenal marriages but phenomenal marriages don't just happen it takes work so let's do that work and we want to create a community and a place and space for marriages to do that that's right this is good you know and Listeners, I, I listen, Iron Tribe. Yes, we're married into crazy, but even as a couple, we need to get fed. We need to grow. And one of the places that we go is to the greenhouse. Um, during the pandemic, we participated in date night. It was the all white. Oh, man. Man. So much Phenomenal. Fun. We had so much fun. Oh, man, I remember that. That was, that was so fun. And that, you see, even stuff like that. Um, now that well i'm hoping that these numbers don't go back up again to the point of you know what i'm saying us having to be quarantined but i want us to be able that's why we created this this uh this getaway i need to this right here is lovely but i need to be in right ease and stuck's face i need to be able to hug on you you know what i'm saying for us to sit down on somebody's beach two more pina coladas please uh, you know what I'm <laughs> and we just sit and you, you feel what I'm saying and enjoy each other's company doing life with one another and not right. around one another so funny I told Snooks right when you made the announcement and uh, I was like oh they're going to, and I was like Antigua I'm like that's on the list that's on our list we got to go and yeah. then she's like what is it you know got the calendar out we're like we're just getting back from Turk and Caicos when you guys uh, are, so, yeah so it's annual it's annual this is going to so be beautiful. By, that, by, by the time it rolls around, we'll already we're already looking at the the next place we're going for 2024. 
That's what's up. Oh, it's annual, yeah. yeah. So you talked about people getting in touch with you. Tell, tell the audience how they can actually find the greenhouse. Um, you can do one or two things. You can go to jquestgreen.com. That's J-Q-U-E-S-T-G-R-E-E-N.com. That's one way you can do it. You can email me at uh, info, in, email the entire team of Faith and, and Shonda, the ones who really maintain that box, but uh, info at jquestgreen.com. Um, you can look for me on Instagram at quest underscore green. Um, you can uh, find me on Facebook, yep. right? At quest underscore V, uh, no, no, quest it's green. green. It's just quest mm-hmm. green, right? At Facebook. And um, uh, on YouTube, quest green. We got tons of marriage videos there. Yeah. We had taken, taken a pause. I'm about to start up again. Um, keep us lifted. Um, they've beat me over my head. And now I'm in the process of writing the book, Quest for Faith, Revealing the Secrets to a Phenomenal Marriage. Right. Yeah. Nice. I love so, that. Okay, so how yeah. do we get a, uh, I want to get a pre-order. How do I get yeah. that pre-order? And as soon as it's, as soon as a pre-order is available, I'm going to make sure that you, like for real, we're going to put it out all, all over the place, but I'm making sure Married Into Crazy is one of the first places that we go to in order to get the, that pre-order information out. Yep. Talk about a dope title, Quest for Faith. Hey man, they, they beat me over my head enough about it, man. So y'all keep your boy lifted. <laughs> we got you. We got you. We'll keep you in prayer. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. So you've been, you've been very generous with your time. I think in parting, I think Snooks is going to ask our last question of the evening. Oh, I am? You are. I finally get to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel the same way, Snooks. <laughs> when he gets to talking, I'm just like, can I, I get a word? Back. Right. <laughs> Shouldn't be wanting to say nothing, Snooks, and I got to fill in the gaps. <laughs> I'm like, are you going to say anything? No, you go ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so lovey. Are you going to say something? I'm like, no, go ahead right now. So anyway. <laughs> So, okay, we are married into crazy, and we know crazy is an acronym for uh, compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. <clears throat> so of those of the acronym, what is the hardest or the easiest for each of you to do? So you can break out either the hardest or the easiest. And again, that's compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, or yielding. The easiest for me is zealous. Mm-hmm. I am a high D, but I am a high I as well. And I think I lean more to my I than I do to my D. And so I'm zealous about mm-hmm. anything that she wants to do. I'm just excited that she wants to do it. Mm-hmm. And anything that she wants to do, I'm like, let's go. Um, the most challenging um, for me would be um, Accountable is not challenging. What's the what's the C again? Compassionate. Compassionate. That's not. I don't think that's a it's difficult. Hard for you. Compassionate, real. Mm-hmm. Accountable, accountable, zealous, zealous and yielding. yielding. I mm-hmm. think yielding would be the hardest because that means mm-hmm. you have to stop and hold yourself up in order to let. I'm learning how to do it more, but I think it's the most difficult thing for me. Is the yielding because now I have to wait. Right. Yeah. I think the most the difficult one is the easiest for him. <laughs> the zealous is the difficult one for me. Um, because I'm not as excited <laughs> as he comes up with these grand ideas, and I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, then. So you got a plan for this? <laughs> I'm like, you need to like give it to me in detail. Like that sounds. But that's what nice. she's there for. I come up with the plans. You just add structure to it. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, being zealous is, is difficult for me. The easiest, no, I think, the easiest would be compassionate for me, probably. I would, I would say so. Yeah. Right. I would say so. I would say so because faith is involved um, with a lot of community oriented programs like at church. She's a a major part of community service. She goes on a regular basis to go and feed the homeless. Um, 
In the children's ministry. Children's ministry at church. She's a mom. Like I'm Faith, a big mom. Like Faith <laughs> is a mom mom. Nice. Well, look, we are so, we feel so blessed. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for your time. Um, for those I'm of you that are, that time. So for the entire audience, I, I'm going to go ahead and list all of those links so you can mm -hmm. find Greenhouse and Quest and all the things that he and Faith are doing. Um, so you can actually, oh, and, and Quest, text me um, if there's a direct link for the trip to mm -hmm. Antigua. Oh, yeah. Please yes. send it to me so I can put that in the show notes as well. Oh, yep. I'll send it over to you. Jeannie Parr is our travel director. Oh, oh, I know Jeannie. Yeah. So she's the one there that handles the stuff for ET. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, that was the one who brought her uh, in for Faith and I brought her in for the first mm -hmm. trip we took on uh for phenomenal life what was it a, was it a cruise? a cruise it was a cruise oh yeah it was the cruise it was a cruise yeah and then she we just found we found genie for <laughs> so we did that oh, and she then, took over. Yeah. Okay. we used her actually for it's funny what did we use her for didn't we use her for dr when we went to dominican republic no we used vacations to go yeah yeah, I think so. But we didn't uh, use her. Mm -mm. We used her company. No, we used her company, but that's why when Eve asked us, we're putting these trips together, can you find someone? I said, well, they did such a great job. Let me go back to them and have them recommend someone to us. Mm -hmm. And they recommended her. And then that's how it all. So now she's family. Right. <laughs> that's how it works, right? That's how it works. Yeah. You show up, you show out, and you become family because I can't be without you now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like us in greenhouse. <laughs> well, look, thank you so much for spending time. Thank with you, us. guys. Man. Thank you. We love everything you guys do Absolutely. as well. So we are honored that you even asked us to be on it. Anytime I get to kick it with y'all, though, I'm, I don't care what we're doing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Really I'm kind of fun. I don't know. Lovey, he's all right. You know. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, we'll let you and Faith kind of get together and just chat, and then. Right. <laughs> We'll have to Look, calm y'all down. Like, no, we're not doing that. Okay, yeah. calm down. <laughs> it's funny because I was out in Cali recently, but I, I I didn't have the time that I I wanted so that I could run around and see a couple of people because I, I definitely wanted to see you guys and the hurlings, but time just didn't. And I had to come back and meet her in Sarasota. So I was just like. It's all right. Hey, that's. What it's, you coming, it's coming. It's <laughs> coming. That's right. It's coming. All right, y'all. We'll take care of be blessed. And like we say all the time, until the next time, be blessed. Bye. Bye-bye. Love y'all.